Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. I am back after a couple of weeks and what a couple of weeks it's been between school holidays and looking after Robbie and work. The boiler's been broken, we've had a leak in the heating so the plumber's been out today. The freezer started making a weird noise and Fred the cat, who you might be able to see sort of mooching about around about here, had to go to the vets because he managed to pull one of his claws out. So everything's been going on. Anyway, kind of following on from one of my most recent videos about the potatoes and buckets, where I harvested the uh, potatoes that we had, the first earlies, from these buckets in this very spot in the garden. And I mentioned that I'm going to reuse the buckets, and this is the compost that came out of them as well, so we'll reuse that as well. And we're going to grow some carrots. And I've got three different varieties here. This one here is called Fly Away. This one here is called Dragon and this one here is Autumn King too. Now admittedly, I probably should have had these sown about oh, three, four weeks ago maybe, ready to go, but it, such is life, they weren't done. But I'm very, very lucky that I've got the polytunnel, so if it does start getting a bit cold for the carrots, I can just move them inside there. If you don't have a polytunnel, if you have a greenhouse, or even just somewhere inside, the beauty of doing carrots in these buckets is you can just pick them up and move them inside to wherever it's a little bit warmer. And even saying that, I've still got the labels from the potatoes in the buckets. So we'll reuse them for the carrots so that we know which one's which. Now, if you've seen my carrot video the last time, you'll know that I'm a little bit particular about getting the, the compost quite, quite right to try and grow nice, long, straight carrots so that they look good and taste good. And with the, the compost that I've got here that came out of the buckets that we've used for the potatoes, it's great, it's been broken up, it's pretty fine, but there's bits of potato root and plant and stuff in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run it through the sieve here. And again, relatively simple, this sieve was only a few quid off Amazon. It's not breaking the bank, you know, I've got one of the soil mill things as well. It's a wee bit more expensive, but it, it doesn't have to be. It can be relatively straightforward. And there's something quite satisfying about sieve and compost. And I'm just bear with me a second, we'll grab this bucket here. Oh, we're just gonna put the big lumps and bits of roots in there. Something quite satisfying about getting that really nice, fine compost through. And what I would say is that this compost here again is sat out in this wheelbarrow in the garden for the last couple of weeks. And we've had, like most parts of the UK, we've had very, very, very little rain next to nothing recently and everything is really dry so what you don't want to do is try and sift or mill wet compost because it just gets stuck in the holes in the sieve or in the mill and believe you me it's an absolute pain to sort it out so we'll get rid of all those lumps and bumps in there and you can probably see in the bottom of there just some nice, really, really fine compost. Now, because the potatoes have been in there, loads of the nutrition has been taken out. So in this bottom bit of compost, we're just gonna put a good old helping of blood, fish and bone in there. And as you'll know, carrots have got big, long tap roots. So it really won't take the carrots very long to get down to that nutrition at that level at the bottom there and start taking it in. So the next step is, I'm gonna fill the rest of this bucket up with the compost. I'm gonna sieve out, I'm not filling that, you can see right at the very end. And then we're gonna use the pizza tray that came out of my kitchen, that's still used as you can see by the state of it, to cook pizzas just last night. And I'll tell you in just a few minutes what I'm gonna be using this for. Back with you in just a jiffy. Right, I'm back and we have a bucket full of finely sieved compost. You can see there, one of these 30 litre buckets and maybe it's about, I don't know what, two, three inches off the top thereabouts. Nice and deep enough for the carrots, get some decent carrots at this time of year. It's all been sifted. We've got all the sort of bits and lumps and bumps, bits of roots, bits of big lumps and things like that. And we don't want that in and about where the carrots are gonna be because obviously if they hit anything like that, they're gonna fork and go off in all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes again. This is spent 
compost from where we did the potatoes. So there's very little nutrition and it's just pretty much that scattering of blood, fish and bone that we put in the bottom there. What I might do from time to time throughout the next few months is just give it a bit of a liquid feed as we go on, maybe some seaweed feed or something like that. But again, if you give carrots too much nutrition, they're gonna fork and go off in all sorts of lumps and bumps and weird and wonderful shapes. And just to show you that this compost was from the potatoes, I managed to find some, there's three four or five there that we found in the in the compost there so they'll go alongside with the carrots when they grow anyway onto this bit the pizza tray why do i have the pizza tray because the pizza tray has these holes in them and it's just about the right size to fit on top of one of these 30 liter buckets and when i do that sorry there's a fly buzzing on me there if i am um, if we pop that on the top there and we put our carrot seed out into our hand. Now it's a little bit of a faff this, I'll absolutely admit that because carrot seed is really small, but what I'm gonna aim to do is put one seed through each of the holes on the pizza tray as we go around. And that is the carrots perfectly spaced out for growing in the buckets and it saves making a template out of a bit of a cardboard or anything like that it saves you having to thin the carrots out because you know when you when you thin the carrots out obviously it releases the the smell from the carrots and that's what attracts the carrot root fly to them which is exactly what we don't want and speaking of carrot root fly which is probably the main issue we're going to have to be sort of concerned with here going forward once these start to grow is the good thing about them being in these buckets is there's a couple of options one is you can get something like some EnviroMesh and just kind of put it over the top of the bucket to protect it or two you can just lift the whole thing up and if you've got somewhere to put it somewhere nice and high maybe it's about two or three foot up from the ground the carrot root fly can't really get that high. It can't fly that high, but you know, there's always the, the option the wind can come along and blow it and stuff like that, but you've got a pretty low chance of that happening. So we'll take our pizza tray template out of there. And what I'm gonna do is just put another scattering of compost on the top. Again, this is our spent compost from the potatoes, and we'll put that in there. And I think we maybe just need a little bit more, another two handfuls, I think, will be just about enough for that. Again, let's get rid of the lumps. And I'm just gonna spread that ever, ever, ever so lightly. And again, when I show you the little water and bit at the end here, we'll talk about why we're being so gentle with that's it done that's maybe it's only about i don't know half a centimeter maybe it's a centimeter at most on top of that compost and the seeds that we've already got in there and again last but not least it's time to water now i've got a giant bucket here and a relatively small bottle with a little squirty on the top but what i'm going to do is for the first few days probably the first week is just water the whole thing pretty gently with this this bottle holds a liter so maybe this won't even need that much. Remember, the seeds are just at the top here. They're not, they're not very deep yet. There's no plants, there's no roots, there's nothing going deep down into this compost. We'll worry about that at a, at a later date. And the reason for that is carrot seed is so light and we only had that little scattering of compost on the top. So if I come along now with a big old hose pipe or watering can or whatever and fire that on there, all that carrot seed that we've just put specifically through the little holes in the pizza tray, it's going to float and they're all going to move about and we've just defeated the, the whole point of what we were doing there with trying to get everything sort of spaced out relatively nicely. After, after a week or so, once you start seeing little plants starting to appear, that'll be fine. We know that they're starting to set roots and they're relatively sort of safe in the place. Use the watering can or whatever you want after that and they'll be absolutely fine. And now the only thing I'm going to have to do after this is rinse and repeat with, I've got another three, no, another two of these buckets. I've got three buckets in total over there, ready to fill up. I'm gonna have to get some more compost. Then we'll do the other varieties of carrots 
and then they'll get moved up to the allotment eventually to, to sort of find their final home over there. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed seeing that. If you'd like to keep up to date with what we're doing, please think about subscribing. Absolutely free, just click the wee button down below, give us a thumbs up if you like this idea, leave us some comments. What are you gonna be growing going into the autumn, over the winter, that sort of stuff, because that's what it's coming down to now. Beautiful sunshine, but August isn't gonna last forever and the clouds will be here soon enough anyway that's me pretty much done for today there'll be loads more content coming in the next couple of weeks back up with the plot there's loads of stuff going on up there so hopefully we'll be getting much more regular stuff out there now when the school holidays finish monday's the last day so tuesday's robbie's back to school some sort of routine on the go and makes things a lot easier anyway that's me done for today thank you very much for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye for now folks